This is part three in my series wherein I explore the phenomenon of communism and its roots. In part one, I introduced the, um, an historical event known as the Paris Commune. Briefly, this was a situation where the government of France went to war against Prussia and uh, quickly got their ass kicked and the uh, Germans the German army became uh, came uh, marching toward Paris and the people the general population including the French soldiers uh, intended to hold out in the city of Paris they were uh, outnumbered overwhelmed militarily and they eventually surrendered but then the population full of resentment toward their government uh, began to rampage and burn buildings uh, and before be, before before they rampaged and burned buildings they attempted to govern themselves and for whatever reason they called themselves communards communards and they called their government the Paris Commune their motive was bitter resentment toward a government that exploited them and used them for cannon fodder and nearly starved them to death and that happened in 1871 well the children of the communards having been taught the lesson that happened in 1871 the children of these communards having been taught the lesson by their parents were living in a world of 1900 1900 I would imagine that's when the world knew that the American Revolution was a success story by 1900 America had proven itself to be a success undoubtedly these communards the children of the communards wanted to duplicate that success they made some mistakes from the get-go the American Revolution was not a workers revolt against a monarch it was not a workers revolt against the bourgeois with the bourgeois is basically the merchant class the business owners Americans wanted independence what did the communists want they were wanting to du duplicate the success story of America I suppose this is a rough draft these are thoughts right off the top of my head what did these communists want they wanted a hippie commune they wanted to own all things in common they didn't want wealth to be confined in the hands of a few they wanted the wealth to be distributed they wanted a utopian hippie commune where everybody could pick flowers and raise vegetables at in their um, common plot community plot and everybody would have a voice in the way the government and the economy was run but instead they got for whatever reason in all cases they got instead a totalitarian prison death camp run by sickos USSR red China Cuba and these sickos these dictators that ran these totalitarian states wanted to extend their rule to other countries and they intended to do this through propaganda stirring up discontent the message of the propaganda is you are a victim revolt so many years later today in the United States we have liberals burning bras 
placing a crucifix in a jar of urine and calling it art, smoking pot, all kind of outlandish things that really has nothing whatsoever to do with the manner in which the American Revolution arose from the inside spontaneously. More or less a tax revolt. The communists, I suppose, made some serious mistakes from the get-go. They wanted to overthrow the monarchy. They wanted to overthrow the feudal system. They wanted to overthrow the so-called bourgeois, the merchant class, the businessmen. They wanted everybody to have a piece of the pie. But in America, it was hard to foment discontent. They created unions, the communists created unions and infiltrated unions, and the unions succeeded in getting better wages and better working conditions, but these workers were happy. They had eight-hour work weeks, vacations, and good pay. They didn't want to overthrow the government. They didn't want to take over General Motors or Ford. Ford Motor Company. Yet these communists or Marxists still persisted in their goal of instigating, fomenting discontent. Now, what group of people, what groups of people are most impressionable, easily led, easily misled? Young people are impressionable young people of student age, uh, various minority groups. And when I say minority, I don't necessarily mean racial minorities. I mean, for example, uh, homosexuality is a minority. And um, Latinos were once a minority. But of course, the Negroes are a minority as well. And the poor in the United States, the poor really are a minority. So you inject resentment in the minds of these smaller groups, these impressionable groups, and you demand more welfare, more health care, more rights, less responsibility. Tell them that they're free to believe whatever they want to believe, so long as they don't believe in American culture. <laughs> 